This is the A to Z Typhoon adapter, and it allows authorized non-Tesla vehicles to charge at Tesla superchargers. It's been incredibly popular since its launch about five months ago, and I believe the company sold about 10,000 of them so far. However, inside this box is the second version of this adapter. A to Z is calling it the Typhoon Pro. They sent me the very first one, and we're gonna take a look at it here today. I'm gonna to use it to charge my F-150 Lightning. We're gonna talk about the improvements that A to Z made to make it a better adapter than the first gen. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's open the box and see what's inside. Okay, we've got the uh, owners manual here and a nice carrying case. Uh, all the A to Z adapters, at least all the ones that I have, come with a nice carrying case, which is a nice thing to have some foam cushion on the inside. Okay, so here's the adapter. Let's slide this to the side for a second. You could take a look at the size. It's actually much bigger than the previous generation and it feels a lot heavier. I'll weigh it later. This feels like maybe a half a pound heavier than this. It feels Super heavy. This is definitely the heaviest NAX to CCS1 adapter on the market. Now, the Electron was previously the heaviest. It was a little bit heavier than the A to Z, but uh, this guy here, I think, has both of them beat probably by a good margin. And the biggest change on this Pro over, over the initial one is the locking mechanism. If you watched my review video of the original A to Z adapter, uh, one of the things that I commented on that I didn't like was there's a manual switch on the bottom here. And you had to first connect the adapter to the vehicle, plug in the NAX connector, and then you had to press this tab underneath and lock it into place. And then also to disconnect the NAX connector, you had to unlock it and then pull the connector out. If you didn't do that, it wouldn't work. I mean, for instance, I have a, um, a Tesla connector here. So let me make sure it's unlocked first. Okay, so you have to put the connector in and then pull this tab and lock it. So now it's locked in place and now you can charge your electric vehicle. If you don't slide this into the lock position, it won't authenticate, it will not charge the vehicle. Um, and it's just a, a kind of a clunky lock that um, this was the only thing I didn't like. And actually a couple of my uh, followers have told me that they bought this and the lock didn't work. They had to send it back and A to Z sent them a new one and the, the new one worked. So it, it, it's, it was definitely a pain point on the first uh, adapter. Another thing that I didn't love was uh, there was seemed to be no um, protection for the CCS1 locking pin. You see it, it's, it's pretty long. It sticks out about an inch. And if you were to drop this it's completely exposed. Now it is metal, it's not plastic. Um, but you know, if it's pretty heavy. If you drop it and all the weight goes on this, I was afraid this might break. So let's take a look at the, the new Pro. First off, we were just talking about the locking tab. You see how the top here has this um, protective cover? Um, if it falls down, some of the impact is gonna be on the edge of the lock, but this protecting piece here is going to take a good part of the of the brunt of the force. So um, that's I like this protection that they added here. Definitely a good a good addition. But the big the big change is the locking mechanism. Now this one locking uh, button that you press on the top actually unlocks both sides, both the uh, uh, CCS1 side, as you can see here by pressing it down, that pulls up and down and that unlocks the CCS1 side. But then when you push it down, it, it only unlocks the CCS1 side, but then you get to a point where you feel it stops. If you push it further, now the little locking pin inside where the NAX connector goes, that pulls down. It's interesting, it's like a two stage. You press down on it and you would almost think that that's as far as it could go, but then press harder, now it unlocks. So if you do get one of these, Remember, when you're disconnecting your NAX connector, you really have to press down hard on it. Um, otherwise, it's not going to release. So uh, that's the big uh, change. Now, both sides,
slides, uh, you know, uh, will, will automatically lock and then are unlocked with this one pin. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to lock, slide a little tab like you had to with the first generation. Didn't like that design from the beginning. I like the adapter overall, uh, and I've been using this adapter for my Rivian and my Ford, which uh, currently they're the only two companies that have authorized to use Tesla superchargers, Rivian and Ford. GM's supposed to be soon, really soon, like, I don't know, within a week or so, but I've been saying that for the last couple of weeks, so um, I don't know um, when they're going to get ac uh, the access, but it should be really soon for GM. Um, and we don't know what their policy is going to be on selling the adapters. I haven't really formally announced yet. I've asked them for clarification multiple times. I've sent GM emails saying, look, what are you going to do with these adapters? Are you going to give them to your customers? Are you going to charge? They were on the GM website for a short period of time for like a $26, uh, and, uh, but then they pulled it off, and I think GM said, no, that's not going to be the price. So we don't know exactly what GM's policy is going to be with regards to giving out the official adapter. Ford and Rivian are giving it to their customers for free. Okay, so if you're a Ford or Rivian owner, why would you buy one of these? You're getting it for free. Well, it's because it's going to take a long time for many people to get them. I have so many of my followers saying, Tom, tell me which one of these things to buy. I want access now. I don't think I'm going to get my adapter from Ford or Rivian until September or October. Uh, they just can't make them fast enough. Uh, Tesla's making them and supplying them to Ford and Rivian. And now when GM gets in the game, that's going to even be more adapters they need. So there's plenty of people out there saying, look, just tell me which adapter is the best adapter to buy. I'll buy that one because I want access to the supercharger network. Now, I've had so many followers say, look, I'm going on a road trip over the summer. I, you know, I, I, I'll pay the money. I want to have the adapter now. So there's, there's a, even a better option now. Uh, I like this adapter a lot. I always liked the A to Z. But now with these improvements, uh, the innards are the same. It's still 1,000 volt, 500 amps. Uh, they still have the, uh, uh, the two... Uh, uh, temperature sensors, one on both ends, that if uh, the uh, the adapter gets too hot, it'll shut off. Uh, you know, I, 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 I haven't had anybody tell me that views these yet that it's that, that that's happened on any of the use case. A to Z has assured me that it won't happen, even in extremely hot areas like Arizona, where it's 110 degrees out. They said you can plug this thing in and charge as long as you want. It's not going to hit the internal uh, temperature uh, uh, that's set to have it shut off. And, and that's the number that I think was 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That, uh, no, that was a surface temperature. I forget what the in internal temperature was actually off the, off the top of my head. But they went by uh, the UL2252's uh, uh, outline on that's going to be the safety certification for adapters. So uh, they followed that uh, with all of the protocol on this adapter, and they believe it's going to pass when UL2252 is finalized. Uh, they're going to submit it and, and have it uh, tested and certified. But this is their new adapter. They're not going to sell both of these. This one is being phased out. It might already be out of stock and phased out. This adapter here is going to be, uh, you can order it now. You can kind of pre-sale it now. It's $215, a little more. This one was $197. But um, as we had with this one here at State of Charge, I have a 10% uh, discount. It's State of Charge, no spaces. You get 10% off. So you get $21.50 off. It'll bring the price down under $200 if you just use the State of Charge coupon code when you check out on the A to Z website. So under $200, you can have this. They're going to start shipping them in about two weeks, right around the first week in August. These are going to start going out. This one is a pre-production. Uh, a to Z's told me it's like 99% what the production uh, one is going to be like. The only thing, if you might notice on the bottom here, there's exposed screws. There's going to be little rubber caps for these here, so you won't see the screws on the production version. But other than that, they told me it's this is it. This is the, the production version. They just didn't have, I guess, those little uh, rubber caps made yet. And uh, uh, I think when they get them, they're going to send me a new production version. I'm going to put this back in a package and send it back to them. So what I'm going to do next is take this out to a Tesla supercharger with my Ford F-150 Lightning. And uh, we'll do a little charging session. I'll record surface temperature and stuff like that, like, that, like I've done before, and record the whole uh, uh, charging uh, session. Uh, I don't know what, uh, I think I'm around 50% now, right now. So it's not going to be a full... 20 to 80 like I did last time, but um, we'll, I'll charge up from whatever I arrive at the charging station at. The only thing I will point out before I head over there is uh, with this instructions here, um, they do have a how to use. And it was a little different than before. Um, I believe before they were saying to plug in the 
the NAX connector first, then plug it into the vehicle. But now um, they seem to have changed that, and uh, unless I misread it the last time. Now they definitely want you to plug in the adapter into the vehicle first. So I'll, I'll read this out here. How to use, to start the charging process, fully insert your adapter into the vehicle, then fully insert the NAX charging handle into the adapter. If your vehicle is compatible with plug-in charge, the charging process should start by itself within a few seconds. My F-150 Lightning is uh, plug-in charge uh, enabled, so it should uh, immediately start charging, or about 10 seconds later, I think. And, uh, and if it's not, if you don't have plug-in charge in an electric vehicle, then you, you start the charging process either from inside your infotainment system or in your uh, vehicle's app. Uh, and then to stop the charging process, you stop the charging process through the app um, or inside the vehicle sometimes you could press stop charging you don't always want to uh, press the button to stop charging now that will stop charging um, if as, as long as the vehicle is unlocked if the vehicle is locked the little tab is going to be pressed down on this uh, this locking mechanism here you won't be able to to press this to unlock it but if your vehicle is unlocked and every electric vehicle operates a little bit differently you should be able to press this and charging should stop immediately but that's not really the right way that you want to stop a charging session you really want to do it through the app or inside your vehicle. Stop the charging um, before you press this button to, to remove the, the adapter. Now, CCS1 stations like Electrify America, EVgo and so forth, there's a, a, a display screen. You could stop charging on a button. You can't do that with Tesla superchargers because they don't have any type of display. So you want to do that inside your vehicle. Okay, so uh, to stop charging process, stop the charging process through the app or inside the vehicle. Um, it says, uh, the, or the NAX uh, uh, handle stop button. So you can press this, but I wouldn't recommend doing it all the time. It's better to do it through the vehicle or the app. Make sure the charging process is completely stopped. Unplug the NAX plug from the adapter. So you want to remove the NAX plug first and then unplug the adapter from the vehicle using the top latch, which you'd press that secondly. You have to press this down completely to get the NAX connector out and then press it down and remove the adapter from the vehicle, which we'll go over when I'm there at the Tesla supercharger station. Okay, so let's uh, hop my Lightning and head over to a supercharger. State of Charge is powered by QMerit. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charging equipment you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and let the EV charging installation professionals at QMerit install it. All right, so I'm out here at the Alamucci, New Jersey Tesla Supercharger Station. This is the same station that I've done the recordings for the original A to Z adapter, as well as the official Tesla NAX to CCS1 adapter and the Lectron NAX to CCS1 adapter. This is the closest supercharger to my house, and it's actually in a real remote area where there's always open stations, so I'm not really taking up anybody's spot by doing these recordings. Right now, there's one other car here, and there's, I think, 12, one, two, three, four, five, 10 supercharger sites. I've never seen more than three cars here at once, so this is a good site for me to do my recordings on. I'm not, uh, in a rush to move out to let somebody else plug in. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at how this works. As I indicated, you're first supposed to put the adapter into the vehicle, then plug in the NAX connector. Now I've, I've initialized plug-in charge on my Lightning, so it should immediately start charging. Uh, it hasn't yet. There's a handshake takes a few seconds and my lightning's at 45 percent state of charge i'm going to charge it to 80 percent record the whole thing i just heard it click and it's charging now so that took about 10 15 seconds uh, and i'm recording the whole charging session we'll take a look at how long it took to get from 45 percent up to 80 percent and i'm also going to be measuring the temperature of the adapter as i did in the other uh, videos. So it's starting out at 88.5 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll see how warm it gets and then analyze the charging session back home in the state of charge garage. So the charging session is complete. We went from 45% up to 80%. The vehicle stopped charging at 80% because I have it set to stop charging at 80%. What you don't want to do when you're using these NAX adapters and any of them is you don't want to stop the charging session by pressing the button. You can, and in an emergency situation, you can do that. And if you do it every once in a while, that's okay. 
but you don't want to always do that. You want to use either your app or the vehicle's infotainment system to stop charging. Some uh, charging stations like Electrify America and EVgo stations, you could press a button on the station to stop charging. You can't do that with Tesla superchargers because they don't have any type of display screen or, or anything. They rely on the vehicle or the app to control the charging. So the vehicle stopped charging, and now the procedure, as I went over before, is to first disconnect the NAX adapter uh, the NAX connector from the adapter and you do so by pressing the button down all the way like I said before and pulling the NAX connector out. I'm going to holster it now and now I'm going to press it to, uh, the button again to release the uh, NAX lock and pull it out of my Lightning. Now we're going to go over the whole uh, charging session, uh, but the couple things I want to talk about is the temperature of the adapter. So the adapter peaked at 118.5 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, I noticed that the connector on the Tesla supercharger actually got a little hotter. That went up to 123.5. So the adapter, while it was nice and warm, didn't get quite as hot as the connector did. Now, if you follow uh, my good friend, Kyle Connor, he talks a lot about this when he does Tesla supercharger recordings. He uses a wet rag around the Tesla connector to cool it off so that the station won't derate. Sometimes that happens. Uh, this station did not derate. I got the full power that I know the Lightning can take in. We actually peaked at 170 kilowatt for a while, which is more power than what I got on any of the other NAX adapter so far. All three of the other ones I've tested all maxed out at around 162, 163 uh, kilowatt. And this one uh, delivered 170. Now I'm not saying the adapter delivered it. That's a uh, uh, communication between the vehicle and the supercharger. But I did see more power go through this than any of the other adapters that uh, I've used so far. Okay, so now let's head back to the State of Charge garage and do a little more analyzing of this charging session. All right, so the new Typhoon Pro worked flawlessly. I charged from 45% to 80% my Lightning in 26 minutes. So I did 35% of the battery in 26 minutes. Not great, but I started at a high state of charge. If I would have started down at, say, 10%, I would have added that 35%. Uh, much faster because once we got up over 70%, I think the charging rate dropped down to about uh, 118, 119 kilowatt. However, I did see a peak charging rate of 170 kilowatt and held that for a while, which is higher than what I saw with the any of the other adapters that I've done my testing on. And as I said when I was out there, it really isn't the adapters. The adapter's not calling for power. The vehicle is and the the supercharger's delivering it, but at least it's not limited and uh, was able to deliver 117 kilowatt for a while. Uh, 170, not 117. And I also uh, mentioned that I always take the temperature, I, I test it every couple of minutes. We started out, it was 88.5 degrees, the surface temperature. It was in the 80s, uh, the ambient temperature out uh, today. It wasn't too hot of a day. And it, the temperature did rise 30 degrees during the test. And, and uh, I saw the highest temperature um, of 118.5 degrees. Now, the interesting thing was I also measured the temperature of the... Uh, the NAX connector, and that got a little bit hotter, 123.5 degrees. So uh, the adapter wasn't hotter than the connector. The connector was hotter than the adapter. So, uh, uh, and it still had plenty of uh, headway to go under the UL2252's uh, surface temperature. Uh, this is a non-metallic adapter, and the surface temperature is supposed to remain under 140 degrees to be in compliance with UL2252. And uh, you know, 118.5 degrees is certainly below 140 degrees. I still like to test this when it gets super hot out in maybe uh, Arizona or somewhere that gets much hotter than here in New Jersey. But I have spoken to A to Z about this and they have said, listen, we've tested this in extremely hot areas. It's not gonna derate, it's not gonna hit that uh, that 140 degree temperature. So uh, maybe I'll get the opportunity to test it at one point in the future. Uh, so it worked fine. And uh, as I mentioned, I really love this new uh, one uh, switch to disconnect both ends of the uh, adapter. Really worked great. I brought out all the other adapters here so you could just take a look. Size comparisons, very similar now to the Lectron adapter size-wise. 
uh, extremely similar, similar when you look at it. Uh, but I do like the fact, as I mentioned, that the A to Z has this, uh, uh, say, protecting piece on top of the locking tab. Uh, you don't get that on, on any of the other adapters. Uh, I think that's important because these things are going to get dropped. Um, I also like how the edge is a little bit flared out here, and, and I didn't have any problem uh, getting the uh, uh, connector in and out, which I know some uh, of my followers have told, reported that they've had problems with Electron, that it won't, they can't get the connector out. There's some tolerance issues in the build that uh, Electron needs to work through. Uh, other than that, that adapter works fine. I've used it plenty of times. And uh, we also have talked about uh, uh, doing like pull tests. So if you notice, when you plug this thing in, I can't get it out. <clears throat> locks in really well, but then what you want to do, and you want to make sure you push the adapter in a little bit uh, when you press this and then press it down hard to remove it. I noticed if you just pull it in, if it's, if it's kind of pulled against that locking pin, when you press it down, you got to push it forward a little and now pull it out. So don't panic if it doesn't come out, but press the tab and push the connector in, make sure it just kind of clears the locking pin and then you can pull it out without, without a problem. Uh, so, uh, I mean, other than that, I find no flaws with this. This is a nice adapter. Um, I, I know that uh, uh, Tesla and the other companies have said they only want you to use approved adapters. That's your call. Uh, I feel comfortable using these. I've talked to both Electron and A to Z uh, extensively about their engineering, and they're both confident that when the thing does get eventually, uh, when they can submit it for certification, that it will get you all certification. There's also been uh, some grumbling so far that we've heard that uh, General Motors might officially endorse the Electron adapter, even though it hasn't had any UL certification yet. Um, and that's coming from some pretty good um, inside uh, information. So we'll see about that. Uh, that would clear Electron. As long as one OEM says that it's approved, Tesla's saying it can be used on their network for, for any vehicle. So um, we'll see about that. We'll see if uh, I know A to Z has been in touch and talking with some OEMs about possibly doing the same thing, but that's a process uh, for them to work through. Um, I mo mentioned earlier about the weight, and I want to weigh these because this thing is really heavy. I mean, this this is a weapon. <laughs> if, if you need something handy <laughs> in a pinch, if you're in a bad situation, grab this guy because you would not want to get hit with this. Okay, so the original A to Z weighs uh, one pound, 11.4 ounces. This new guy here is two pounds, 7.6 ounces. Now, the, the, the Electron was pretty heavy too, but I don't think it's two pounds, 7.6 ounces. Two pounds, 2.2 ounces. And then the uh, official uh, Tesla adapter... One pound, 11.3 ounces. So very similar to the A to Z. These are similar, but the uh, the, the new uh, A to Z uh, Typhoon Pro is heavier than the Electron. This thing is heavy. It really feels well made. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I like the original one. I thought it felt well made and everything. They made improvements. I love this uh, piece on the top here because I am really concerned about people breaking these tabs on, on all three of these. Uh, if you drop it on pavement, these things are heavy. Uh, you know, th th there's a good chance this is going to break off. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you can, you can order that part. I, I don't think they'll sell you a part for you to change it. This piece here is important. This is a good ad for A to Z because I really think that's going to help. You'd really have to drop it right at the right angle so that it wouldn't hit this side or this top. It could still break, but this does give you good uh, protection. It really does help. And uh, um, I love the fact that this just one tab here unlocks both ends. Uh, it's definitely a good improvement. Okay, one last thing I want to mention. You may have read in the news, uh, geez, I guess it was about two weeks ago, Tesla initiated a lawsuit against a company called Jeco EV, J-E-C-O EV. It's a Chinese uh, company uh, that makes uh, a, a, NAX, a, CC, a NAX to CCS1 adapter. CCS, yeah, NAX to CCS1. I get those confused. Back and forth. Adapter uh, that they've been selling. It's kind of like the third one on the market. I've been aware of this adapter for a long time, but I didn't even decide to review it because I was 
not comfortable with, with the company. Um, so Tesla just entered into a lawsuit. They're suing them to stop selling it because what they're saying is they're, that they're, Jacko EV represented false uh, statements about the adapter. That the fact that it's it's advertised that it has temperature cutoff switches when it hits 90 degrees Celsius, the adapter stops working. I know for a fact that Electron and A to Z, as well as the Tesla adapter, have those safety switches built in, but Jekko said they did, and they didn't. <laughs> Big surprise. And, and also, they also said that it was IP54 rated for water and dust in, intrusion, and Tesla uh, in, in their suit says that that's not true. Um, I've seen this before. I've seen this with charging equipment that some manufacturers uh, flat out lie and say it's UL certified when it's not or that it has a, a certain IP rating and then I spray water on it and water, I open it up and water's inside. So it couldn't be um, properly uh, manufactured under a certain IP rating if, 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 if I'm getting water inside very easily. So, um, you know, be careful. Uh, I've chosen specifically to talk about Lectron and, and A to Z because I, I feel like those companies um, uh, they've been established. They make good quality products, and I, I know the I, I I know them well. I actually talked. I emailed with the CEO of Electron over this issue with uh, Jacko, and he assured me. He said, "Tom, we're not under investigation by Tesla. Um, they're 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 satisfied with our product. They haven't contacted us and said, you know, we don't like what you're selling this because I know uh, I've heard from some contacts in Tesla that they are currently now looking at all of these adapters very closely." And if any of them they decide aren't safe, they're going to sue the companies. They're going to sue them to, to stop selling them. They're going to send out cease and desist letters. Um, I have this on good <laughs> good authority from contacts within Tesla. So um, you know the the Jacko EV might not be the only company that um, that that we hear this about. I'd be very surprised if we hear that from either Lecter, that that they're going after Electron or A to Z or s telling them that they're going to sue them. Uh, but you never know. Uh, as of right now, uh, they, they don't seem to be um, uh, telling either of these companies that they're going to sue them or, or whatever. But um, you know, you never know. Uh, this is this is a dangerous thing if the things aren't made right. Uh, I'm comfortable with the Electron and the A to Z. Uh, that's why I've been reviewing them and I've been using them in my vehicles now for four months, I guess, three or four months. I've never had any problem. None of my followers have reported any issue other than the the manual latch on, on the A to Z not working and they had to send in, and get a new one and A to, Z, A to Z has been good sending them back and under warranty, which um, the old one and the new one has a 12 month warranty. And Electron, the problem, the initial problem with the fact that the NAX connector would pull out hot, big problem, but they quickly fixed it. But then it seems like they went overboard then some of the people said they couldn't get it out. Uh, and, and, and we've seen pictures online of, of these left on Tesla superchargers because the, the person just um, gave up. Um, I'm, I'm ass assume that Electron has fixed that issue with the tolerance of the inside of, of where the adapter goes in. Uh, I don't have any new products and I haven't had any of my followers really recently tell me they got a new one and they couldn't get it out. Uh, but if you do get the Electron one, um, just be, be cognizant of that, that it could be hard to pull it out. You definitely want to leave it in the vehicle so that when you're pulling out the NAX connector, it, you have some, uh, it's, it's being held in stronger so you can pull it out in case it's, it's loose. And I tell you, it wouldn't be a, a, a terrible idea to just take a little um, some type of lubricant and just hit the inside of, uh, of this. You don't want to get a ton of it, but just a little bit there, just so when that adapter goes in there, maybe it just gives it a little bit of lubricant to pull out um, in case you, you have that problem. I haven't seen that problem at all with A to Z, um, and hopefully electrons move beyond that. I do have a coupon code for the electron social state of charge, but that's going to expire in about a week. You get 10% off the 10% uh, off the uh, uh, a to Z adapter, that's not going to expire. So uh, if you want to order this, uh, the new Typhoon Pro from A to Z, just use state of charge, 10% off, save $21.50. The uh, Electron adapter is, I think, $200, so you're going to get $20 off, but that's going to expire um, probably August 1st, I think, right around August 1st. So if you like the Electron, get that before August 1st, get 10% off. The, uh, the A to Z, you got a little bit more time with. They haven't announced when they're going to end that 10% uh, discount. Well, that's all I have here today for the new Typhoon Pro 
NAX to CCS1 adapter from A to Z. It's an improved adapter of the first generation, but if you do have the first gen, I don't want you to feel too bad because this thing works just fine. I mean, the only glitch is that uh, manual lock on the bottom, which I don't love, but it works. And uh, I've been using this for the last few months on my EVs, not a problem with it. Uh, if it does break, uh, A to Z will send you a new adapter. I assume you'd get one of these because we're not making this anymore. This is the A to Z NAX to CCS1 adapter now uh, moving forward. And it is an improved adapter. It's, it's, it's definitely, I love the improvements that they made on it. Um, you know, if you don't want to wait for uh, Ford or Rivian to send you your adapter, or if maybe you own a GM EV and you don't want to buy one, uh, I feel comfortable recommending this or even the Electron one. Uh, I, I, I think they're both fine adapters. Um, I probably would lean towards this new improved A to Z. Uh, I like the features it has. Uh, I really like this. The, the, it's very similar, the, 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 these two adapters, honestly. Now, the Electron and the A to Z. I do like this uh this little uh, piece on the top here that protects this lock. I know I mentioned it a few times, but um, I think that's important because it's definitely a concern of mine that you're gonna drop this out there in the parking lot and break those tops and they, they, they might, you might have to throw it out at that point if, if, if it's broken. And uh, I think this is gonna make a big difference in, in protecting it if you do drop it. Uh, listen, if you have any other questions about the uh, new Typhoon Pro or any of the other adapters, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer whatever I can. And if I can't answer them, I'll reach out to the manufacturers and try to get you uh, the answers that you seek. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.